Alrighty, so for this next session, I'm excited to introduce our co-host, Sally Arkell-Bowles, who is poised to take us on an exhilarating journey into the heart of strategic thinking. She's a true luminary in the realm of strategic mindset, and with a wealth of experience and a passion for imitating breakthrough success, Sally is here to unveil the success that can transform your personal and your professional life. In this talk, aptly titled Strategic Mindset Unleashed, Igniting Breakthrough Success, Sally will guide us through the uncharted territory of strategic thinking, providing us with the keys to unlock our untapped potential. Today's world demands adaptability, vision, and the ability to size opportunities amidst challenges. Sally will not only spark the flames of your strategic genius, but also show you how to navigate the path to extraordinary achievements and remarkable growth. So prepare to be inspired, enlightened, and equipped to take your journey to the next level. As she often said, the stage is set, and now the strategic adventure begins. <laughs> Thank you, Natasha, and everybody for being here today. It's been my pleasure to co-host with Natasha, and I hope that you're finding a lot of value from all of the speakers that we've been able to um, bring in with us today, because it's been so much fun for us to be able to really focus on building that authority. And so today we've heard from so many people about the different strategies to apply from things like our branding to how we show up on LinkedIn to how we show up on video and with our content. And then we've worked out um, on the courses with Sophie. So lots of strategy. So everybody has heard about the mindset and what's going on. Everybody's talking about mindset these days. At least a lot of the people are that I'm around. Um, and I think it's one of the most important things that we have to focus on as a business owner and an entrepreneur. So today I wanted to dig down, not just to talk about, you know, high level, but really getting into what is a strategic mind shift mindset, because this is going to be the secret to igniting your breakthroughs in success, because when you actually apply all of these strategies or the ones that you think are going to be best for you, that's when we're gonna be able to move forward and create the success that we want. But so far, I just wanted to say, hasn't it been a fabulous day? Haven't you had fun? Put in the comments who you've enjoyed listening to and what one of your takeaways is, because to me, that's the benefit of coming to a summit like this is to know that there's been so much shared that can really make a difference for you in your business and your life. And hopefully um, you'll be able to share some with some of the friends that you know. So let me see, there we go. So who am I? <laughs> I am um, really in the business of being able to help others transform their lives through the power of the mind. And so I had worked in the corporate world for over 30 years. So I'm kind of aging myself at this point, but I've been in leadership pretty well my whole career and would and morph from different organizations and different industries many different times. And what I found was, there was something about what I would bring to the table, and I didn't really understand this until I decided to leave my corporation, is that there was something that I was always bringing to the table every day that others weren't. And so one of those things that I discovered about myself <clears throat> was that I was st very strategic in my thought patterns on a daily basis. So I remember in my last role when I was in finance and investments that... <clears throat> What I did was I would be driving to work and it was only a short, like 10, 15 minutes to work. But every day an idea would come to me about a problem that we could solve or what could we do differently to, to work on something. And it, I realized at that point, as I was coming into the office that, geez, I had an idea that I wanted to share with whoever I was working with in leadership. So I would go and I'd have a conversation and we'd just talk about that issue and that, that solution. <clears throat> What I didn't think was unique was unique. And it was my strategy behind my mindset. And so I see a lot of people focusing on mindset and having, you know, putting out their needs or their wants because we, we want to manifest things. But where's the strategy coming from? Where are those ideas coming from? And so I knew I needed to tap into that a little bit further. And another thing that I'd always been told uh, I was as a coach and a leader was that I was very intuitive. Now, <clears throat> I learned over the years how to become more and more intuitive and in other, in other words, really understanding the human psyche. 
and understanding people. And so that's what led me in part to coming into to my own business. The other element that I brought forward that I found was when I was in the corporate world, there was a big element missing from how to drive success. And when we are driving success in our businesses, we tend to do the same things over and over. And you've probably seen that a lot in your businesses. <clears throat> but what I found was that although we had very successful people in our business, we also had people that were really struggling. And then we'd have the mid range people that would always be at that same level of performance. And what was the difference between the low uh, performers, the mid and the high performers? It wasn't that they didn't understand what to do. It's how they applied it and where their mind was taking them and that belief of what they could achieve. So as I, I actually asked to be um, given a package from my work when I left after 14 years, and because we were in transition as leadership anyway, so I just asked to leave because I knew there was something bigger and better for me to be able to explore. So that's when I really delved deep into the mindset and understanding what it takes to be successful in anything in your life and in your business. So today we're going to dig into a few things that are really going to be um, instrumental for you in not only understanding how to keep your mindset positive and driving towards what you want, but how to bring the strategy in to creating the results that you truly desire. So put in the comments for me, what is the one thing that you feel that you could be doing better in your business so that we can sort of talk a, a little bit about that as we're going forward in the slides, because I'd like to be targeted if we can, if there's something. So if it's if you're struggling to find those leads, if you're feeling that you're not getting the results that you want, if you're feeling that you've got one area that's really strong, but then there's something that's, you know, you're, you're finding that you're holding back, or what are your fears, worries, and doubts that you go to sleep with at night? Are you going to, to bed with fears, worries, and doubts? Because that's going to help me to be able to really tailor this program for you. So I'll give you a minute if you can do that. And Amber had put in there, she's gotten something from everyone so far. Great speakers and valuable information, says Stella. And welcome, Virginia. Okay, I don't see anything coming in the chat just yet, so I'll just move forward. So let's talk about the power of a strategic mindset. Now, if you're in business, as you all are, you have a strategic mindset because you wouldn't be able to work with people and create your programs and create your offerings that you have if you weren't strategic or even how to market online, right? We all have to have a strategy with regards to that. So I want you to think about what is it that would make a difference for you and what is a strategic mindset? Because to me, a strategic mindset is being able to step out of the everyday details, all those things that we have to do and looking at the situation almost from above where you're giving an objective perspective through that bird's eye view. So when we're, we take ourselves out of the doing all day, and take the time to just set ourselves aside and say, okay, so what is it that I would need to do to create this in my life, my work, my business? Where's that gap and how can I, I look at that differently? And it can be a really tiny thing. It might be as, as simple as the posts that you're putting up and how many you're putting up in a week and seeing whether that's going to be something that you would want to work on. Um, it can be as simple as saying, you know what, I just don't like doing this thing. Maybe I need to outsource, but what would that look like? So I want you to think about the strategic mindset, not necessarily being something that's difficult, but bringing the thought pattern of what's what the future could hold, what's next when it comes to that strategy. Um, and Stella says, my biggest question right now is who needs my new service? Um, I know who needs it, but how do I convey it? Yes, so getting that message across as far as how to actually market new programs or new services that you're offering is, is great. So we'll dig into that for you, Stella. So 
there's three parts in a strategic mindset and a way of working and thinking that I want you to, to think about. Um, the first one is really those skills, right? When you have started out, there's definitely an opportunity for you to be able to really think about how are you going to be able to apply and understand strategic models that you can use to guide but not to lead you? So oftentimes when you're in strategic meetings, what I found is that you can get overwhelmed with all the have tos that would come up from that and all the extra work and it can become very overwhelming very fast. So when we're looking at our mindset, I want us to really think clearly and just take out the look at the possibility for everything and look at it as an adventure and a possibility as opposed to, you know, this is going to be difficult because as soon as we open up to possibility, it opens up the doors for the right ideas to flow in. So when we're thinking about the first part, understanding that you have that list of ideas that can come to you that as you start thinking, they start listing, just make that big list, just start finding out what are the different strategies that come to you. Um, I have a couple of different things that I do that I'll talk about in a minute, but it certainly is uh, helping you to define what that's what your mindset is asking you to do and where you want to go. And it will naturally start once you get into the flow, it will naturally start taking you down the path of creating things. So as an example, Natasha recently decided that she wanted to, to do her online course um, and have something that would be evergreen. And so she went through that thought pattern of when it would be appropriate when it would be something that she would think that would work what the topic would be she consulted with Sophie and then she was able to work with her and really fine-tune that so she decided to hire somebody to bring forward to help her in that process now we don't always have to do that I find I ask <laughs> one of the things that I do is I just open my mind up to the opportunities and let the ideas flow because when you let go of all that outside chitter chatter, your mind will actually take you to where you want to be if you're asking those right questions. Um, part of that mindset is just being open to receiving whatever those ideas are that come to you. And then having somebody like I did in corporate to be able to run my ideas off of. So if you have a partner that you can do that with or find a friend in the business that you can roll your ideas off, Natasha and I do that all the time now. Um, and, you know, we come up with an idea, we just might say something and the other one's like, well, yeah, what if we did this? What if we did that? So someone else can help you build on that strategy. Secondly, you need to build up your knowledge and understand um, of the business that you're in and the world um, it operates in. So when we have someone like Amber, who has a very specific market, what are they looking for? She said earlier, they're not wanting to be commenting on my posts but they're perfectly fine in coming in on a private conversation because they feel safe there, right? And so she had to discover that, whereas I wouldn't have even thought that from my audience. Um, but I do find that there are a lot of people, like we said earlier when Jen was talking, that are lurking. And so they will pop into your DMs, won't they? <laughs> when they're lurking or when you've offered something that really appeals to them. So part of that is revisiting your strategy but making sure that you're understanding why they're doing that. So our mindset is going to help us to be able to do that. Um, operating and looking at our trends and the landscape of the, the platforms that we're using. We all use different platforms. I think most of us are on LinkedIn. Um, I was I stayed away from LinkedIn because I didn't feel like I could actually show up there the same way I wanted to. And I know Jen said um, in her presentation that a lot of people don't go to LinkedIn because they're afraid of being judged by their past colleagues. And that was probably part of why I didn't, but I also knew they all wore suits and I didn't want to wear suits anymore. <laughs> right. So my mindset had to change on my strategy on who I wanted to attract because I didn't really want to attract those suits. I wanted to attract a market that I was really excited in. So I got to look inside and say, who is it that I wanted to work with? And then last but not least, we have a healthy and curious mindset and be open to be challenged and question our own thinking. So I know there's been people that have come into my, my scene or my work, um, but also even my spouse who challenges me sometimes and saying, well, why don't you start working with this type of person? Because he hears me talking about it 
but yet I'm putting a block up and he's saying, well, what about this? So then I get to explore that, right? Or what have, have you thought about, like Natasha just did, what have you thought about doing an online course, right? Or Natasha just opened up her YouTube channel. So she was waiting for a certain point to be strategically aligned to open up her YouTube channel. So it gives you that opportunity to sort of plan, but also be strategic in the steps that you're taking. Because at the end of the day today, you would have heard, you're going to have heard so many great insights and strategies from people, but pick one or two at a time and prior, put down the ones that most appeal to you and then decide which ones are going to be first. Because what I know is that overwhelm is so easy. And I, can you put up your hand, just put up your physical head. Can you relate to going to a whole bunch of things uh, workshops, master classes, and everything else, getting all this information and then not doing anything with it. <laughs> I have. I've done that because it, it, it gets to the point where you finish this master class of three days and then all of a sudden you're back in business and you, you just don't have the time to implement the things that you chose to implement. And so making a committed decision to pick at least one thing from all the events that you work at or go to, or anything that you attend, pick one thing that you can focus on to say, this is the one that I'm going to explore right now. You can still have your list of 10 or 15 things, but pick the one thing that you think is going to propel you forward first. Because when we're talking about the strategy combined with our mindset, we don't want to get into that overwhelm, right? Overwhelm is going to take us completely back to where we were, and we're not going to implement anything from the learnings that we've had. Um, and it's focusing on understanding how all of these things are going to contribute to the whole of what you've got going forward. Now, has anybody heard of our thoughts becoming reality? Yes, Estella. Yeah, Amber. So how easy is it to manage your thoughts? Do you go to bed at night worrying about what you did during the day? or feeling that, you know, I didn't do enough, or maybe you're just like, oh, how come the money's not coming in? There's all these different things that can happen to us when we're thinking about our thoughts becoming reality. And one of the biggest parts of the strategic mindset and from a lot of successful people is their overarching focus is on the end game, not on today, but on the end game. Did this take me closer to where my goal is. Because if I take my eyes off the end game, I'm only focusing on today. And as my thoughts say, yes, this is the one thing today that made the difference for me to get from here to towards my goal, one step closer to my goal, then that is what's all, all I need to focus on is that thought creating my reality. Because if I start to worry and I have the fear and I have the doubt, then I'm going to hold myself back from really thinking about where it is that I want to be. And any successful person will tell you, no matter what happened, I kept my eye on that goal. Think of an athlete that's running a race and they see the finish lines 100 meters down and they want to get to that 100 meters, they block out everybody else and they just focus on themselves to get there. But if they started focusing on everything in the, uh, the crowd and all of the different things going on around them, they would never get to that goal and have an opportunity to win a medal. So they have to clean all that focus to keep going forward. So in our day to day, we need to do that as well. We need to have that direct focus. And I'll, I'll go back to what Kitty said first thing this morning, as well as Jen, and they said, both of them said, be really specific on where you want to be and who you want to work with to get to where you want to grow your business. So we need to really think about what specifically are we running after to create that success. Now, let's unpack some of the secrets. I want you to think about an iceberg. And we're going to put the conscious mind is at the top of the iceberg. And underneath it is all those subconscious thoughts. <laughs> I see Amber's head me nodding. <laughs> yeah, I hear it. And that subconscious mind is the one that's the power. Because in our um, conscious mind, what we have is our five senses 
that are feeding into our conscious mind. So we have our see, sight, or our sight, our hearing, our touching, our feeling. And what's the fifth one? I always forget the fifth one. Taste. <laughs> and the taste. There we go. Um, and so when we think about that, those that's what's coming into our conscious mind. And our conscious mind takes that feeling and it brings it into our mind. But the subconscious mind can only accept whatever we put in through our conscious thoughts. So when we're thinking about that, if we're thinking that I'm not good enough to be an, an A student, because I was told when I was six years old that I wasn't smart, then guess what? I'm gonna feel that in my subconscious mind and that automatically feeds my body with the energy saying that I'm not good enough and therefore I present create results that aren't good enough. And unfortunately, a lot of our mindset is created at a very young age with our paradigms because of what other people have told us because unfortunately, unfortunately for some reason, but when we're children, typically below the age of five, whatever we, we are told, we accept as truth. So if one of those things as a child was that you were not able, or money didn't grow on trees, we can't afford to buy that. Money doesn't grow on trees. We can't afford to take you to Disney. Money doesn't grow on trees, right? We heard those things when we were younger. Or maybe you were sitting in your classroom in grade one or two, and all of a sudden you were looking out the window, just daydreaming. And the teacher said, pay attention, Natasha. Stop daydreaming. Oh my gosh, isn't that what we were supposed to do? We should be daydreaming because that's where our imagination is taking us. But yet we were told that it was a bad thing. And so now we're told not to even daydream. And so I think that that is a big element of what we've been raised with. And sometimes we don't even know what those are until they actually show up later on in life and we recognize that pattern. And it's about age 12 where we're able to start questioning those statements that we're being told about ourselves. And so we've all heard about teenagers and how they get tougher to handle. Well, why do you think that is? Because now they start to understand that there's never going to be a tree that has money on it. So why are you even saying that to me? So they start to question that thinking. And so I want you to really understand that as we are um, removing those barriers, everything is still operating in the background, right? It's still operating in the background of our mind. And it's a storehouse of our beliefs, our memories, our past experiences. And because it operates quietly in our background and it shapes our thoughts and behaviors, we don't even realize it until all of a sudden we recognize something as we're older and we say, what is it? Why am I reacting that way? Why do I respond to my spouse that way? Why do I respond to my sister that way? How come at work I can't handle this, but other people can? That's when we start to think about ourselves and think about where's our mind taking us. And for instance, a fear of failure can hinder someone from pursuing their dreams because other people have told them that they can't be successful. So we really want to make sure that we are focused on what it is that we can do with our subconscious mind because the subconscious mind is really going to help us to be able to move forward with where we want to be so as we're moving forward we want you to think about um, what are the subconscious beliefs that you have that we can re you can reprogram for greater success and so we're going to talk about some of those as we go a little bit further and if you have any put them up in the chat um, Amber says, I had to unpack so much starting with women and children it should be silent and less spoken to and subservient. That's a really tough one, right? Um, to break free of that and to be able to understand that we have a voice. Um, Natasha says, recognizing and evaluating and eventually unlearning thought patterns and stories we've acquired can make a huge difference. Um, I know one of the things that, you know, my husband, I have four sisters and my oldest sister and I are very alike. And I, I know that um, once I started studying myself more, my husband would say to me, oh, you're just like your sister, Jill. I would get offended by that, right? And 
when I realized that that was just his perception of me acting or say, responding in a certain way to certain circumstances, it made me sit back and, and question, why is it that I'm responding that way? Because I'm very much alike, like her. And obviously it, it sounded to me like he didn't appreciate me sounding like her. But to him, it was just a statement. But to me, it was like, well, is she that bad? Am I that bad? <laughs> so my own thoughts started going. And now if he says that, I'm able to say something differently in response or I'm able to react differently in that response. So it makes a big difference for me. Um, and then Darnell says, how to bring the mind back to a positive place after life happens? Uh, death in the family, uh, accident, sick parents. How do we grieve and get back on the horse so we can be there for those who look up to us and who may not be as strong and motivated? That's a great one. And I appreciate you asking that, Donnell, because it's very common for people to hold on to grief and to hold on to life circumstances. And so my perspective on that um, is really to make sure that you can step into that emotion of that event but recognizing that we are going to have a lot of different circumstances that are showing up in our lives at any point in time. And sometimes they're very unexpected, aren't they? So things can happen that we just don't expect and that can really take us off our game because it, you know, as an example, someone might be in a tragic accident and die at the scene and you didn't get to say goodbye, right? Those kinds of things can be very, very difficult for us and, and you know, it's part of that grieving process, but also switching it around to what was the joy that I received from this person in the time that they were here and being able to bless yourself for the fact that that person that is no longer with us or that, you know, there's been a tragedy, all of these circumstances lead you to the growth that's coming forward in your life. Um, you know, I've lost my set of parents and my husband's set of parents and there's, you know, I've had miscarriages, three miscarriages in my 20s, and there's different things that come to you, but sometimes they end up being learning and or opportunities for us to grow in a way and appreciate things in a way that we didn't before, right? So now I'm very empathetic to women that have had miscarriages because I did, right? And so when you understand that there's other elements that you can bring forward, I think that's um, what is really leading us to the opportunity that we have. So hopefully we'll be able to get that through. Now, next one. The mental programs that dictate our behavior that can lead to growth. So when we're talking about the mental programs, um, we're really talking about that growth mindset. And it's a belief that we have in our abilities and the intelligence that can be de developed through effort, learning, and perseverance. And so the growth mindset is really, for me, it's, it's allowing me to understand that there's so much more opportunity out there for me if I open up my mind to learning and growing. And it does improve your resilience, your motivation, and it allows you to open up to higher achievement. So I'm gonna give you a couple of practical tips for cultivating a growth mindset. Um, and so one of those is reframing challenges as opportunity for growth and learning. So when we're talking about that, one of the things um, I like to do for when it comes to a growth mindset is give myself the opportunity to look at things from an outside perspective, as opposed to looking at them from my inside perspective. So when I detach from the emotion, for a moment or two, I can look at it differently and say, hmm, how would I have handled this differently? How would I approach it if I knew that I could grow from this opportunity? And what would I do differently next time? So when you're asking yourself different questions and better questions, you'll get better answers. And oftentimes what I'll do is before bed, I have a little ritual before bed well, where I will ask a uh, I don't know what I'll call it. It's a question, but it's also an affirmation. So whatever I want to have happen for me, especially from a growth perspective, I might say something like, how exciting is it that I now am a published author? 
right? I might not even have started a book, but if I'm asking that question, how exciting is it that I'm actually there and I'm actually created this, I guarantee if you do that consistently at night before bed and go to bed with the feeling of being that published author, that ideas will come to you. Now, the one caveat is my ideas come to me at between two and three in the morning. <laughs> and then I have to get up and I go, I've trained myself now to get up and just go to my office and start writing the notes and the flow that comes to me. And it's amazing what flows to me when I'm tapped into source. So whatever your source is, um, when you're tapped into it, it can really add a lot of value to that growth because asking those questions about what you want to create or what you want to receive in your life is that growth that you want to grow to, but the ideas will come to you if you ask that. So that's one strategy that I use all the time. Another one is I've surrounded myself with people that are in the place that I want to be. So there's... Um, if you surround yourself with five people that already have the success that you want to have or have the life that you want to have, you will start by osmosis learning from them and becoming like them because they are the people that are already where you want to be. So an example, maybe you wanted to be um, a, like Sophie, you wanted to be a content creator for courses and to help people with that. That was something you always had in the back of your mind that you wanted to do. Find those five people that are already having success with it and start creating a community around it with the five of you so that you can share and mastermind those ideas. Um, Natasha and I mastermind all the time in an inofficial way, unofficial way. But I surround myself with people that are more successful than myself so that I can grow to that level. So whether it's an income level, whether it's a business level, whether it's a personal level, whether it's a fitness level, surround yourself with those that are already at the place that you, you choose to be. And that will help you with your growth. Paradigms. We've talked a little bit about paradigms. Um, and paradigms are one of those things that really <laughs> sneak up on us. We've talked a bit about them from our childhood, but we also have them as adults. And so as we're looking at our paradigms, it's paradigms are really just a habit that we have adapted into our lifestyle with a certain belief attached to them. And so a habit might be that Every night I go to the fridge and I have something to eat before I go to bed. Could be as simple as that. Or a habit might be that um, I believe that I will never be able to have X, Y, Z in my life. That's a habit as well. So as we're ta talking about the different habits, it can be a money paradigm. It can be a sales paradigm. I saw someone this morning put up something about, you know, what if you don't like to sell? What do you do? And that's a big paradigm. So I'm going to give you a tip and I want you to write this one down because when you have a paradigm that's preventing you from doing whatever you want, I want you to write it down on a piece of paper and I want you to write it down in as much detail as you can. So let's say example, sales. It feels icky. <laughs> I don't like to ask people for money. I don't. I just want them to show up. I don't like the feeling that it gives me. I feel like I'm being pushy. I'm feeling that it's hard. I'm feeling, and just start writing down everything that comes to your mind with regard to that paradigm. And then on a separate sheet of paper, after you've got that down, I want you to take another piece of paper and write it exactly how you would like it to be. Oh, sales just comes so easily to me. People knock on my door. They are so excited to work with me and partner with me. It's just having a beautiful conversation with another human being that really is looking for what I have to offer. And so you start writing down how you would like it to feel, how you would like it to look, and you write it out in as much detail as you possibly can. And you make it beautiful and you make it easy and you make it simple. And how you feel, this makes me just feel so valued because people are showing up and I know I can service them. I know that I can help them with the transformation they're looking for. And I just feel so fulfilled that the work that I've chosen to do is offering such value. And then you're going to take that piece that you wrote down how it felt like today, 
And you're gonna burn that, just symbolic, but burn it to get rid of it. <laughs> Take it out to your fire pit, or I put mine in my sink and burnt it in there. And then just reread that second page over and over and over so that you start to believe it and you start to feel it because once you rewrite it, that means you've already seen it in your mind's eye. And whatever we see in our mind, we can hold in our hand. So I want you to think about that and, and try that exercise and let us, let me know um, how that goes for you because I think that's one of the elements that is really a good opportunity. And what I would do when it comes to paradigms, because we have a lot, pick one or two at a time. Never do one or more than one or two at a time because it can be overwhelming. We want to deal with what's your biggest one? Get that out of the way first and then do another one that you might have that might be, one might be personal, one might be business, or one might be combined. Does that help? Now. This is my strategy for helping you to find a way to have unparalleled success. So the first thing I want to really share about is this four-step system. I use this all the time with my clients. I use this all the time in some of my mini, or mini courses. But these are four steps that I'm able to use. The first one is setting the right kind of goal. Now, when we're talking about goals, I used to actually, in one in the book that I have that I wrote with a, a colleague, um, it's called Acting with Intention, The Secret to Redefining Your Success. We actually talked about SMART goals, specific, measurable, attainable, realistic, and time-bound. Today, I do not believe in that. I believe in a different way to look at our goals. So there's three different types of goals. I'll call them goal one, two, and three. So goal one to me is, let's say I was looking for a new car and I have, right now I have a Land Rover. Maybe I would like to get a, a newer edition of the Land Rover because it's got more bells and whistles. It would be smooth. It would be, maybe they have a color that I'm looking for or maybe a model that I've, I've fallen in love with. But there's really no growth in me getting the same vehicle. Right? When you're going after a goal that you've already achieved before, there's really no growth associated with that. So if I've already done it before and I know I can do it, it doesn't really constitute growth. The type two goal is really looking at something and saying, well, if I had this goal and it's X, Y, Z, maybe it's buying a new house or creating a, a different piece of my business. And then I said, okay, but if I'm gonna put the plan in place, and, and I'm going to have this whole plan all outlined in detail the whole way. If anything goes off of that plan, it's not me that failed. It's the plan that failed. So there's no growth in that either because we're overthinking, we're planning everything, and we expect everything to fall into place. And realistically, don't we know that things don't fall into place exactly as we plan? So there's really no growth or excitement in that. And the third type is big and bold and beautiful. This one needs to be your ultimate destination. Where's your big fantasy dream? Because if there's one thing I know about goal setting, and it is when we set a goal that is beautiful and big, we are going to have the desire, the determination, and the staying power to make it come to reality. So I'm going to give you an example of one of my clients, Tracy. So she came to me um, as a single mom, and she was actually in a relationship with somebody at the same time, but she had been working for a health services organization in the U.S., but she had previously been a realtor and had a real, real estate license, and she had not sold anything, hadn't done very well in the real estate, but she really had a big desire to be back into real estate. So when we set her goal and really worked to fine tune her goal, what she chose was that she was going to be an international real estate professional and that she was going to have, she has this massive big dream on what she's going to do and how she's going to build this empire. Well, after about a month and a half of us working together, she hadn't had a real estate sale in a number of years. She found a client. She got that place up for the client. 
and it sold all within 30 days. So she was on her way to building her business within 30 days of us working together and having a completed sale. And the sale went so easily, so smoothly, and so fast because she had this bigger riding goal, overriding goal that was motivating her to get there. And today, what she's done is within, it's been about, I'd say just over a year since she's worked on that, um, she got to the point where she was texting me and we were working together in November and she was having sales, uh, people approaching her with opportunities to buy houses with no budget, like unlimited budget. <laughs> so that was about uh, a year, not even a year, that was about six months after she had people that were approaching her with an unlimited budget to buy real estate. So she has taken off in her real estate career and always every time she makes a sale, she's texting me and letting me know what she sold. But she has this big overriding goal that's allowing her to see the possibility and that energy and that enthusiasm is driving her to get those results. So that's an example of having a big worthy goal that's gonna really drive you to where you wanna be in your business. So if you've got a big goal like that, put it in the chat. We'll keep it confidential, but I love to have big goals because big goals motivate me to have success. Now, when we have vision, has anybody here vision casted before? I love vision casting because like I said earlier, when we see a vision in our mind's eye, we can hold it in our hands. So as we're having this bigger goal, what's your vision for the future? How are you seeing yourself for the future? And that's where when we can see it, we can feel it, we can be excited about it. So it might be a dream home. It might be seeing yourself on stage. It might be having number one bestseller books. Whatever it is, you can definitely drive toward that. The next one that we have is inspired action. Because what you'll find is once you've got your goals and your vision, you will start taking inspired action action that will drive you toward that goal. It's not going to be the everyday humdrum of just going and posting and doing those things that you normally would do. You want to be able to have inspired action. And so I launched a course a couple of months ago. Um, and what I did was I was just talking to some different coaches. And all of a sudden, I'm finding out that they've been working their passion for a long time, but they didn't have results. So I threw together a course that very next day. I announced a course that was coming. I didn't have anything figured out for it other than I was going to help them monetize. So I took that immediate action and it was fun. And I created the course and people were asking me for what the questions were that they wanted answered. So it all fell together really quickly, but it was an intuitive thought. It said, I just need to help and serve. And so I chose, right? And I took that action and I took it immediately because therefore I couldn't step back out of it but held myself accountable. And that's where the growth truly comes in is when we're taking these three steps, we end up having the growth that we desire. Now, intentional thinking. Is your mind full? I love this little napkin. Is your mind full or are you mindful? <laughs> because when we're talking about the role of the mind, we wanna be aware of our thoughts and consciously choose what we're focusing on. And providing practical techniques for practicing that intention, such as meditation, mindfulness exercises, keeping a gratitude journal. These are all things that you get to do. And I like to change my to-do list to an I get to list. So this is one of my favorite things. And Natasha's smiling because she's heard me say this one before. <laughs> but I actually sit down every day and I write down maybe four or five things that I really take um, and I put in, I get to meet with Amber today and pour beautiful energy into our conversation. And so I put down something like that with, with the energy that I'm bringing forward in it. And then after I've had my conversation with Amber, I put a little heart beside it. And that has changed the whole dynamic of my day because I'm putting down the most important connections that I'm going to be making that day with those people. And then at the end, I ask the universe to take care of the rest of it. You can ask God or everybody else and say, you know, I just need you to connect me with Natasha or da, 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 whatever it is that you're looking for in that day. And that one has been really, really powerful for me. So I want you to think about your thinking patterns and consider how more mindful you can be on your day to day 
um, and go with the flow, go with the flow of your energy. Some days I just need to get up and go for a walk outside to just clear my mind and listen to some music or dance around the house just to clear my mind to get myself back into that state that's mindful. Now, one of my mentors, I've mentored under a lot of different people, but one of mine was Bob Proctor. And he said, the difference between successful people and all the rest is that successful people take action. And I don't want to confuse taking action with being busy. Because when we take action that is leading us toward the goal that we're really after that is going to free up your time you're going to be less busy and more productive so I want to just um, share about that because it's not about working harder it's about working on the things that are going to matter to you to create the success that you want to su succeed on And as we pave our way for the unparalleled success, um, there is a roadmap. There's a roadmap that we can follow that talks about the goals and our vision and maintaining that positive mental attitude. And the core principles of that are the ones that we've just talked about. The goal setting, the power of visualization, and the role of our positive mental attitude in achieving that success. And of course, personal growth and continuous learning are important. Um, and it really does help us when we have the role of intentional action. And I heard Jen and I heard Kitty and actually every one of the speakers talking about some intentional actions they take every day. So what are your intentional actions? And don't overwhelm yourself. Keep it to one or two things that are your intentional actions that you're going to do to move your business forward every day. So if it's like Kitty where she said it was 2020 with her process or Jen saying, you know, I only spent half an hour on LinkedIn and she's got 30,000 followers. Like, <laughs> how does that happen, right? So thinking about what are you going to do in those elements? Just want to get forward here. So now as we go forward, I want you to think about what are the things that you have that are questions on how you can actually help um, yourself to be able to navigate through some of these things. Because I know that a lot of people have questions about how to really be strategic in their mindset. Um, but what other questions might you have if, about mindset and how you can be strategic in either setting up your goals or getting your vision in place, having those opportunities to be able to have that growth and be strategic about what you're doing in your business. I do have one for you, Sally, because I do I do like how you you know talk about strategic mindset and not just mindset uh, as a floating object, so to speak. Uh, is and and I like that you talk about you know intention. So I think my question would be, since you finished with that, was how do you move from like mindset and new new you know new stories, new identities we're building to intention? How do we translate them in tangible intentions we get? Tangible uh, international actions, I should say. How do we go from just the mindset to the action? Yeah, so I think what I do and what I found that most people do is I, I try to keep them focused on one thing at a time, right? So pick one element that you want to change in your business or in your life and really focus in on that and really think about the paradigms that you have around it first. So you might want to do that same exercise that we talked about and said, is it a paradigm or is it just something that I want to add in? Because oftentimes it's a paradigm that's preventing us from moving forward with it. So doing that same exercise is helpful. Um, and then being able from there to say, what are the possibilities and what is it that would get me excited about doing this ex intentional activity? Because when we really work with intention, what we're able to do is to really move ourselves forward in that next step, that next direction. And an intention can be as simple as making a commitment to yourself that you're going to go to the gym three days a week. Making that committed action, um, taking that committed action is really an important element of it. So when I know that um, when I, I'll give the example of when I went into LinkedIn at the beginning of the year, I made three different intentions to myself that I held myself to that committed decision. Right. One was I'm going to be back in LinkedIn and I'm going to have a presence. 
The second was I was going to get consistent with having a weekly podcast episode that I was posting because I had four in a year and I thought, no, I need to do it weekly. So I, I, I intentionally set that one. And then the other thing that I set was that I was going to be really intentional on who I was actually sourcing in my audience. So I had those three intentions that I made as a commitment to myself, that those were the ones that I was going to work on going forward this year. And I've been able to do all of those because I committed to myself. So it takes you making that decision on what you're going to do. Don't overwhelm yourself by doing a whole bunch at a time. Those were my three for the year. And I'm working on those three to finish that year off in that way. And I'll have new ones for the new year. You might want to set one and say, yes, my intention is to have a, a course. Or my intention is to update my branding and really get my niche fine-tuned. Whatever it is that you know, you've got as far as your driving force, find one thing and make a committed decision on it. And that will allow you to have that intention to move forward. But don't let anybody or anybody, anybody or anything take you off of that game to create that intention. Does that make sense? Yes, it, it does. Thank you. And that also brings me, uh, brings another point. Uh, sorry, not sorry. I'm taking over because I, I'm, I'm familiar <laughs> with what you said. And I can think of a couple of things. It's also like, because I think a lot of us are very, you know, de-hustling but also still taking a lot of international action and making sure that we make progress mm -hmm. towards our goals but i think it's like how can we navigate as we're you know unpacking a lot of stuff and i'm thinking a lot of hustle culture and you know being an overachiever or perfectionist in recovery would you have any like uh, recommendation you know for mind strategic mindset recommendation as we're you know getting learning to give ourselves more breaks, I think would be the, the better way to put it. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and I think it, it is learning to give yourself permission to follow what feels good inside. Right? Like I know I, I sometimes in my day catch myself still where I'm overwhelmed, or I'm rushed, or I'm feeling impatient. Uh, I'm going to give an example this morning. <laughs> because some of you probably don't know what happened today, but here's an example. So my building that I live in, I live in a condo, um, put up on our, in the elevator the other day that they were going to have power outages all day today at my house. And I'm like, are you kidding me on this day? Like, this is the first time <laughs> it's happened. You're going to be taking the power out? So I went online and I found a co-share space that I could come to to be able to do this. I got here this morning and the, the door fobs weren't even on my app to be able to get in. So I got here with enough time to set up and then had to pivot immediately to go back home to set up at home. And this was all within like a 20 minute time frame, okay, that I had to pivot to come back and go back to my home to do that. And then just as we finished um, before our lunch break, my power goes off. I had to flip over in the lunch break to come to this place that I now had the access to that they had granted like later than they should have, but I finally got that access. I had to pivot, come back here and show up. So I could have let that completely take me off my game. I did get a little tense, <laughs> you know, and then my, my laptop bag all fell out in my car as I was driving back and so on and so forth. All these little things came up but I focused on where I needed to be and what I needed to do. And everything seemed seamless to most of you other than Natasha, who I was like, guess what happened? I got to head out now. I got to make this happen. You know, I walk in and my husband's at home. He's like, what are you doing here? And I'm like, ah, this happened. So you just need to go with that flow sometimes and just let that stuff go and just do the action that's going to help you to get to where you are. Um, and so I think it's very easy for us. Like I could have just like said, Natasha, you take over. I'm out. I'll try and figure out if I can do this. But I took an action ahead of time just because I thought that would work. It didn't. And then it did. So you work on those things and go with the flow and take the action where you need to be, because sometimes strategy shows up for you in a way that you can't control anymore. And you just have to go with the flow. I think it worked out okay, don't you, Natasha? <laughs> That's I why think we did well. I mean, it's, like this. <laughs> yeah, it, it's also like, I mean, going back to what I said this morning, like what happens with live, you know, live events yeah. of any kind, it's also like, it's a, 
it's a good teacher, you know, it's a good life, life, life experience, you know, yeah. for a really bad, but completely owned brand. But yeah, uh, yeah no, so that's think... actually good. And I, I think that it's a, it's a, it's an important point. So mm -hmm. yeah. And like I was just saying in the chat, we started on time. <laughs> yeah. Well, we just don't know when circumstance is going to show up, right? Um, I can have the, the best mindset and say, yes, everything is going to flow with ease, which I, I did this morning, but then it just didn't. And I just had to take action to change it, to create what happened. But, you know, uh, I look at it and say, okay, so this is what happened. And then I stayed on until the lunch break. And it was exactly at lunch break, my, all the power went off and my computer was done. So it was like perfect timing, right? It couldn't have been better timing. <laughs> <laughs> so when you you shift how you respond to it and say this couldn't have been better timing and now you know about a half hour before the codes showed up for the doors to get in and here I am right so I think when we just go with that flow and just trust that it's all going to work out eventually it does we might have to shift we might have to make a different decision or a quick decision at some point but it all will fall into place and if it doesn't then it's okay don't beat yourself up about it Well, thank you, uh, Sally. Uh, that was um, that was really, really insightful. I wasn't uh, expecting any less because I know that uh, you were really helpful with me as I launched my business, started working on uh, new adventures uh, to help me with uh, mindset and strategic mindset because, you know, it's better when we can actually take action and make something, <laughs> something with it. Uh, does anybody have any last question for Sally? If so, please sharing the chat before we wrap up this amazing session. My one tip is to just make sure that you're picking one or two things from today and you'll take action on it. That's it. That's it. That's a good one, you know, because uh, avoiding overwhelm is, uh, is a good thing. <laughs> mm, absolutely. Okay, I'm going to stop share. Okay. And yeah, thank you very much, Sally. And